Okay, we come to the next problem. Consider three processes uh, with process ID 0, 1 and 2 respectively with compute time bus 2, 4 and 8 time units. Okay, so these are the time bus of these processes. All processes arrive at time 0. Okay, so all processes arrive at time 0 and consider the longest remaining time first. Okay, so this time the longest process uh, gets into the CPU first okay a longest remaining time uh, scheduling algorithm in LRTF ties are broken by giving priority to the process with the lowest process ID so if you have two processes that have the same amount of remaining time and that is the longest remaining time then you have a tie and to break the tie what you do you give the priority to the process with the lowest process ID because you have these 0 1 and 2 process IDs and then you have to find the average turnaround time okay so there are a couple of things out here uh, uh, the first one is longest remaining time which is clear because as as the processes will run on CPU the remaining time will decrease and the one with the longest remaining time will get the priority okay so that's one thing and the other thing is about average turnaround time okay so what is average turnaround time average turnaround time is the time total time okay is the total time that a process takes total times mean the time at which the process arrives and the time at which the process completes so the difference of these two times okay the time at which process completes minus the time at which process arrives that's the uh, that's the turnaround time okay that's the turnaround time for that process and if you take the average of turnaround times for all the processes you get the average time around time average turnaround time okay so so let's see what we can do out here so uh, okay uh, so all these processes arrive at time zero so if this is zero then uh, this is a good thing that all of them will arrive at this time zero okay and uh, for these processes uh, I'm writing them p0 p1 and P2. Okay, their IDs are 0, 1, and 2, so I write them P0, P1, and P2 like that. Okay, so what is the burst, the CPU burst they need? Okay, the time they need in CPU. P0 needs two time units, P1 needs four time units, and P2 needs eight time units. Okay, so that's what I know, and I'm writing this down because these will change, and accordingly, the process will, will get priority out here. So, the first thing what will happen first, okay, the first thing that will happen is the all of these arrive at time 0, so at right now which process has the longest remaining time that is process P2, okay, so P2 will be given the CPU, the CPU will be given to P2 and P2 will, P2 will run on CPU and as the time will pass this remaining time for P2 will decrease, okay, so it will decrease from 8 to let's say 4 okay and this will happen after 4 time units so that means that when you are somewhere out here let's say at 4 okay that the remaining time of p2 becomes 4 and the remaining time of p1 is also 4 so at this time p1 will get priority why because there is a tie both of for both of p2 and p1 the remaining time is 4 and in that case the process with the lowest process ID gets uh, the priority so that means that P2 will be kicked out and P1 will come in so P1 comes here okay and then what happens P1 runs okay so P1 runs let's say for one time unit okay yeah, because it will cover one time units that's the assumption you have to make that a process has to make at least one time unit before it is kicked out so at this time what happens is the remaining time is 3 after 1 okay so then what happens at this 5 now p2 becomes the process with the longest remaining time so p2 comes in again okay and then then p2 runs for one time unit and then it also becomes 3 okay then the same thing okay p2 is kicked out and this happens at 6 and then again there is a tie so which process gets the priority but the one with the lower ID that is P1 
So P1 comes in and then you have the same thing again. The P1, uh, the, it, it spends one unit time, so two time units are left and then again P2 becomes the one with the longest remaining time. So what happens is that after this one time unit at 7, it's again P2. So P2 comes again. Okay and the same thing repeats so then what happens this p2 is gone the time goes up till 2 okay so when this happens then what do you have so p2 is up till here okay so this is what happened up till here okay p2 p1 p2 p1 and p2 so at this point what you see is that all the three processes have the same amount of remaining time which is equal to 2 and then there is a tie among all the three so to break the tie you give priority to the process with the lowest id and which in this case is p0 that means right now p0 will come in okay and when you will run p0 it will decrease to 1 and then there will be a tie between p1 and p2 so you can see what will go on okay so there will be p0 uh, sorry there will be p0 and then there will be after one one time units there will be a change p1 and p2 when this is done all the times will be decreased by one one and you will again have a tie and then again you will repeat the same thing p0 p1 and p2 so this is what is going to happen okay after one time unit for all of these processes this is what is going to happen and then finally at this point everything will be done and all these will become zero okay and these will be one one all this will be nine this will be ten this will be eleven this will be twelve this will be thirteen and this will be fourteen so then what you have to answer is average turnaround time okay average turn around time so that means you have to take average of all the turnaround times and what did we know about the turnaround time is the time difference between the time when process completes and the time when it arrives so all the processes arrive at time 0 and let's look at their completion times p0 completes at 12 so the turnaround time for p0 is 12 minus 0 that is 12 and p1 completes at 13 so the turnaround time for p1 is 13 minus 0 13 and the turnaround time for p2 is 14 minus 0 14 and when you divide this by 3, you get the average turnaround time. So this will be 12 plus 13 is 25, plus 14 is 39. And 39 divided by 3 is 13, which means the option A is the correct option.